Good evening, everyone. Welcome to another Do Not Falter Battle Lounge with the 2MK team. As usual, I'm waiting for a sound check, since I do not do this myself. We're expecting a lot of people today, so the room is likely to fill up quite fast. And we've only specifically set two arcade machines on today. But the room itself shouldn't be too hard to find. This is technically our NA lounge, though we may see some players from other places. But if you are anywhere near the coast of the Atlantic Ocean and have good internet, you can probably assume, especially given this game's rollback, that you'll be okay. It won't be terrible. And we don't mind giving it a try. Our focus today is mostly, in fact, about combo theory. Different characters in this game have different levels of what they need to do for their combos. But more importantly, you have to be very careful about how your combo theory works relative to the amount of MP you have remaining. If you're on a punish and your opponent's on defense, or you had enough control in neutral, you don't necessarily have to worry about this as much then, particularly as the round goes on. But if you're one of those people who is specifically trying to get as much advantage as possible, particularly early into it, you have to know a lot of combo theory. At the start of the round, you have only, as you can see now, 100 mana. And this means that some combos are just unavailable to you outright. Of course, in some cases, pressuring your opponent or setting up situations like this one may still be good for you even with less MP available. And in this particular situation, just shown from our launcher side, you can basically go in because you have a tiny bit of white health, which will help you once you've reached exhaustion state or are just about to. This is therefore the standard follow-on from everything we were discussing before about conversion, when to use it and why. Because obviously you don't want to convert in this situation, when your white health is basically pushed all the way down to the bottom. But you definitely do want to try this when the situation hasn't gone terribly badly, you just got poked off or were forced to block for a little bit. Or in some cases where you were blocking for a long time but then got back control, that's the perfect time for what we're talking about. You need a lot of combo theory then, because you have to decide even though I don't have enough MP to finish this combo, I have a little white health. And that means I can convert once I've gotten close enough to that point. Other than that, you must come up with alternate ways of stressing or pressuring your opponent because you're exhausted. And even this relies still further on whether or not your health was low enough in the first place that you were about to run out of MP, because spending a lot of time in neutral before re-engaging the opponent is more effective when you're already low on health. This isn't too different from how other games work with their own meter a lot of the time. Sometimes it's a matter of games like Guilty Gear where you have tension and the tension always resets. Or just the first round of a match in games like Street Fighter where you simply don't start with any meter and have to build up some as you go. Though in this case, it's reversed. You get to have more, more so because you are potentially losing than because of any winning conditions.
This is compounded for these two today because they're still working on the matchup somewhat. Neither player has quite as much time to play as the others, and this just isn't that common a matchup to have to fight in most places we've seen so far. If given the option, most people forced to fight this matchup will change character to one of their secondaries if they have one. One of the most important things about your combo theory is recognizing how to get all the way to your awakening attack. And for characters like Launcher and Vanguard who have specifically difficult to space or time ones, life gets even harder. opponent makes certain types of mistakes or lets themselves get pushed into certain forms of pressure, you can get really close to killing them with just that. Launcher has a little bit harder time than some characters, but a lot of them can get probably on a good starter from nearly dead to dead for sure, but also from things like half health right down to the end. Some are outright infamous for this, technically. I'm told that our room is now full. Today we're probably going to be jumping off sometimes to go see if anyone else is using the second machine, but if no one is, I expect to see a lot of different movement. Of course, I am quote-unquote stuck on the stream station, but this is no issue. I think the most likely condition that will happen here is if you want the rematch, hope that your opponent from the previous match that beat you then ends up getting pushed off, and then will shift over maybe. Characters like Inquisitor have even more complicated combo theory simply because not only do some of her moves specifically not hit at other places and some specifically OTG, not only does she have exhaustion that activates differently depending on how low her health is, but on top of all that, she has instant air moves that actually combo. Fortunately, despite her extremely low health, she's really oppressive. And in that sense, you should probably consider her not to be so much a low health character, but an easily killed character. These two things are separate because if she's good at oppressing you while she has a lot of white health damage, and she's also good at preventing herself from taking other types of damage, it mostly just means that she'll occasionally get hit and then if she only took white health damage, she'll probably be able to keep you out of her way for a while. It's super important to actually put a lot of effort into a different part of combo theory then. Making sure that you end your string with something that will take off her white health so that she's not as functionally durable. 
and particularly true to avoid letting certain combos go for too long due to the problems you can run into with them. For Vanguard, this is slightly easier due to the general tendency for him to move forward and backward quickly while still having a lot of range on her and generally against opponents like this one. But she can generally deal with this by knowing when this is going to happen. The key here being that when you realize your opponent is likely to retreat, the fact that she has some moves that are slower but do attack that space, the slower part stops mattering. And from there, she can just have control. But note again, the problem that comes up. Having less MP, less mana to do anything with, which means that at the beginning of a match, she has to play much more carefully to avoid specific things happening. Even those same moves that keep the opponent at bay can't always be done when her mana is too low. Meaning that she's relatively straightforward, not necessarily linear, but enough so that the opponent could make some inferences about where she will be or what she will be trying to do, more so based on watching her meter than anything else. And because she tends to not have meter, long pressure strings are more effective. Simply because she won't have a hundred bar to actually push you off the guard cancel in the first place. Note, for example, the opponent's retreat spacing here. It's largely about getting a combo going for long enough and then backing off simply because there's nowhere further to go. An opponent who is not able to do more moves by their nature isn't necessarily one who can chase you down. My own character is another one where understanding your different states, and in some cases your opponent's different states, is a big aspect of the combo theory. In fact, similar to Inquisitor, she can end up running out of MP quite quickly against opponents with really strong defense. But simply staying still isn't necessarily going to help, as the opponent will also have more MP, so you would take more damage whenever you did take any. And as you can see there, basically half her health is gone in one combo. ways to deal with this is to pressure the opponent so hard that all they can do is push you off in a more standard way. 
Once they've done that, you get a little more meter to do crazy things with. And sometimes that little more is all you really need for the purpose. But notice that Vanguard is able to do all of that without ever actually using much MP. So if you thought you were going to beat out this character because you were going to tire him out, think again. If anything, you should think of it the other way. How can I defend long enough without hurting myself or getting killed by that level of combo that I get all my MP back while they're striking? Similarly though, that because of the way the uppercut works, and the timings you would otherwise have to deal with it, just straight pressure will be helpful sometimes. Forgetting that doesn't work that way. You have to spend a lot of time learning to read your opponent's retreats, therefore. The more they retreat, the more often you have to look for an opportunity to get something off that retreat itself. Okay. 
But beyond just focusing on the concept that your opponent retreats, you can start to think about what ranges that creates for you to either allow you to fake an approach or just use an attack that you wouldn't otherwise think is a good idea. A very important thing when that combo will take this much of your health. Note, for example, that my goal here, for a while, <clears throat> was just, you know what, you're going to hit, so hit. I'm going to take the HP instead. The MP regain as well. You do need to be careful because some characters, like Vanguard, can confirm pretty powerful stuff, even off of air hits. works if the opponent is higher in the air, but I can't be sure. Heyman's combo theory is somewhat more linear, mostly being more of a rhythm thing. Do I have this much MP, and if so, do this versus do this other thing? And since, unlike Vanguard, Hitman's strings normally require some MP use in the middle, if not all the way through, you tend to know the answer to the question basically from the third hit.
one for Fenrir to herself. Hers is not so much combo theory for the purposes of doing damage, but because if you do it correctly you get more setups, and if you do it incorrectly your opponent generally knows what will happen. Here, for example, is just enough MP to go for the kill, which is why sometimes you don't want to be put in the same situation of hitting your opponent too much and then getting nothing out of it because they end up with too much meter after. And Hitman has even more reach than Vanguard, he simply can't keep going for as long. He can manage without the meter, but he won't actually get that much from it. If he has enough meter, he'll manage, but he generally has to stop when it starts to run low, especially if he wants the better situation. It is part of the reason why this character does need to sometimes just pressure people, because you can't really do much out of her pressure strings at all. If you're lucky, you can uppercut. But this, as a result, is a death situation.
pulling her out of her stuff is usually your best bet because there are gaps in there and if your opponent doesn't have the right spacing, you tend to get pushed off. Lost Warrior has approximately, I believe, the most straightforward combo theory in the game. As it's almost entirely about distance and how much MP do I have. His moves also have long enough animations that you literally have time to look at the meter you've got available and go for the next thing. However, if you want to be one of those Lost Warriors who is so skilled that you can just manage to get massive damage off purely straight hits, then you do have to put in some effort for the combo theory. The main issue being that you don't normally have a problem with MP at that point. If you are in a stray hit situation with this character, hmm, chances are you've got the MP for converting into whatever you want, you just might not be able to do big damage after it. There's a good example, and there's another. Those may not seem like stray hits as a generality, but given the flow of the character's play style, strictly speaking, they are. And therefore having the faith in them and the hit confirm capacity to do them in that way is going to save you a lot. Another reason why it's complicated how you should approach Lost Warrior in that space. If you pressure too hard, but the player is good enough at defense, you're just letting them gather up enough MP for themselves, and probably, given the way most of his moves work, you would have to use some of your own to prevent having problems. Another thing that greatly helps certain characters, and especially this one, is simply that if you've taken white health damage, you also get the additional MP meter rise for it. It doesn't really rely on the fact that you weren't blocking. You can basically get a larger MP bar because you blocked well enough for long enough. Of course, you don't really want to do this because the moment you do take a hit, you spend more time trying to deal with the problem of regaining the health. But, as he is also a character who doesn't necessarily have to worry about this once he starts moving, an opponent who just does a really long string, even close to guard break, isn't necessarily doing themselves any favors if they make any mistakes in this string and give you an opening. So while he's not the most defensive character in the game, you definitely get more payoff for defending well than you do for certain others. And this is despite not having really good options on what we'll call Invincible Wake Up. A good way to think about this is that this is a high damage character once he's been hurt already. And thinking about that clearly can help you develop different strategies than you might otherwise use.
from the attacking side, therefore. Do be careful that you're not spending too much time in neutral trying to control a character which, even if you did control them, you're probably still giving them a benefit. In fact, there are many situations in which Lost Warrior explicitly wants you to deal small bits of damage so that he can get the conversion as an option. Given that his moves move so quickly, that having conversion is basically like having a faster way across the screen on demand. Or rather, at least a safer one. He also dies from half health, which does surprise me. I think the room is full now, but I'm not absolutely sure. I think everyone's still in match for this machine. to match up with a lot of stray hits in it as a generality, but the more gutsy the players become, and the more familiar with the standard routes they become, the harder it is to land any damage without doing something somewhat outside of the norm. Once you have that as the thing you're doing, you do have to start thinking a lot more about how to get these things. But at least with these two, they don't have to worry so much about the MP aspect of it. They have good reach on normals. and aren't really all that. Let's go with vulnerable when using these long reach moves. One way to force them to use more and more of that power is to dodge at the right timing. And so you'll see as they pick up the pace, more and more of that happening. But it is more because you spend so much time in this state that it's more important to get the specifics done for your combos when you do get the chance to hit them. So while this one just works as a result of being close range, our launcher has to solve a different problem. 
being able to tell when the opponent is not going to react because they're expecting a longer string. Because she does have tools for this, she just doesn't get to use them very much otherwise. If you think the opponent is going to come forward, but you've put them far away, her 2B will help you, like that. If you think they're not going to come forward, she has basically an aerial scatter shot that can be put in similar places. Neither of these things explicitly put you in danger. Even against Hitman who has all of the reach to actually hurt you for doing it, he won't necessarily get anything off doing it in itself. And you would definitely prefer most of your interactions in this matchup to not get to this point, for example. You don't want to be knocked down if you can help it. No matter how much advantage it can give you in theory, it doesn't actually matter. So once that has happened, she can think of different ways to get the opponent into spaces she would prefer them to be in. Similarly, when she gets a really high juggle in the air, the same thing is possible. You know you're not going to get more off the opponent anyway, but if you drop the grenade, they can't necessarily do much to you either. And at least they'll have to think about it. This matchup is oddly relatively easier for Inquisitor because she can spend a lot more time in the air than most characters. Now, just doing that as a core concept doesn't tend to work too well because the Ranger will aim there. Or simply wait. But she has a lot of reasons why this works if the opponent is trying to stay further away. Because, as you've seen there, not a lot of damage is necessarily taken. And as mentioned previously, this character is really good at just tanking through stuff and regaining health eventually. The aim in getting into the air isn't always to actually attack, though. is to make your opponent move differently. As you can see here, they can just keep shooting. But if they just keep shooting, it becomes easier to dodge through their moves. And she also has literal advancing moves that once she's just close enough, they tend to help quite a bit. In fact, I would say it costs Ranger a massive amount of energy and MP to stop the Inquisitor from advancing. The question is, can she advance quickly enough in the first place? The answer is usually no. Your, your actual progression forward tends to be slow because you keep on getting shot. And there's not many ways around constantly getting shot other than to think about it only in the sense of can this character even hurt me? And even with this, technically that could have been a lost condition for the ranger 
almost entirely. The only thing you need to throw on top of that when you are actually being pressured, not hit, pressured, is to guard cancel out of things because you feel it's time. this is so effective against Ranger specifically is because he's one of the few characters who have really, really small hitboxes on attacks that therefore allow you to dodge through them. This can work for lots of characters, but most characters can't hang in the air as well as Inquisitor can. If you're familiar with dealing with the type of character that zones you really hard from other games of this type, you probably are familiar with the thing we always say about them. If you go straight at them, you will usually just get defeated because that's what they're building their game plan around. And generally, they'll try to get back as much as possible. The game itself designs this character type so that, in general, you don't beat them before they reach the other end of the screen. Which is why you often have to specifically think about how to get them there through manipulating their perspectives more so than actually getting through their zoning. For example, we had a character, a player, doing things that were basically just zoning for a really long time, but they've already had to change from that at least slightly. The main question you have to ask yourself is what made that possible? Because this player is clearly, like, top level, grinds, knows every way to through it. And it's because they do and aren't just some random ranger that they eventually stop just backing off. Understanding why they had to not just back off, though, is the part you're considering important for your own play. Because not doing that, as just demonstrated, costs a lot of energy for the ranger. As you can see here, while it does rack up the white health, it doesn't necessarily help. Because the zoning itself also doesn't ever technically do more than that. Basically what I'm saying is if your opponent is pushed off, particularly by your guard cancel, this character doesn't always have a safe way to actually get the damage required to bring all that white health down. They can only continue to shoot you for a while or take a relatively bigger risk. Similarly, once you've gotten this far, you can play fairly defensively on your own end. One good reason for doing that, as demonstrated here, is now you can build up some meter of your own in case you need it. Similarly, we've definitely seen before that you don't necessarily have to be all that afraid of being guard broken by a ranger if you are aware of when and why it's likely to happen. Oof, reactions. It's very important to spend more and more time thinking about how much energy the ranger has taken so far to keep you where they need you to be. As when they've run low, you have a lot, lot less to worry about. Yeah. 
didn't expect that, did you? Well, technically, I was the one who didn't expect that because of the exact same reasoning. If you are far enough health-wise, it doesn't matter that it worked out that way. You had so much white health to recover from your own forward movement that you can have awakening and still have half your health. Grappler similarly has the same sort of hard time as Vanguard, oddly enough. Because the main thing that prevents Vanguard from being effective is not necessarily can I reach, but am I fast enough? Do my moves have quick enough startup? And Grappler's slower moves don't. So you can see why this might be a good enough reason to change, but not necessarily the reason they did. This matchup, however, is easy for a grappler if you understand one thing. Neutral jump is your friend. Will it be easy against this player? Almost certainly not. But the actual understanding of what you need to do isn't complicated. Now that he's tired, you basically can neutral jump as much as you want. Now why would I say that given that that move exists? Remember that at any point where I give advice of that type, the purpose is to make your opponent stop doing the thing that you actually can beat. Well, the rather, the thing you can't beat. Grappler will suffer trying to get in on Lost Warrior in almost every situation. But if you neutral jump, now the player must focus on all of the things that they need to do differently in order to hit you out of that neutral jump. If you never neutral jump, then as far as they're concerned, you are only capable of attacking head-on. And if you can only attack head-on, then you don't really have an offense against this character. He's just quick enough, just barely quick enough, to beat out even your charging tackle, which is presumably why you haven't seen Dwolf even try to use it. Honestly, you could just hold the block button in these specific situations and save yourself the trouble. But even that will not be enough for various reasons. There's reason number one. On the other hand, every literal moment you spend on the ground is another moment where this will happen. Unfortunately here for Dwolf, the opponent is counting on the fact that one has not thought through the full ass responses that happened there. Lost Warrior's ability to attack above his head is fairly poor. Meaning that when you actually try to do this at close range, you're often in a lot of trouble. He has a good parry for this, but you don't have to necessarily attack.
But we go into what I believe is the last on-stream match of the night. I have learned to like this matchup. Originally, it felt completely impossible. Because it's fairly close. If you don't understand, like, the most obscure things. But... I learned one, and hopefully this match gets me the chance to show that one that I've learned. And I was halfway through, through learning another one that relies on the first one. But it depends entirely on what this player's thoughts are in terms of pressure. So let's see. immune to a lot of stuff. But I haven't seen the move I'm thinking of yet, so it's entirely possible that this is not going to get to be showing off anything. Fortunately, from the other side, the more aggressive troubleshooter is a lot more it's a lot clearer what to do. Whew, I do not know what Lai just did. Or what that was. You can join us tomorrow for our Street Fighter V Mishmashing Battle Lounge. And our first post patch Melty Blood Tuesday Melt. Yeah, I cannot see. Unfortunately, that means I can't tell whether or not I'm mistiming the things I'm trying to do, or just not possible. Not see at all. And that, I assume, must have been a mistime based on the same problem. But as the lounge is over, or rather, as the stream is over, it is no longer required for anyone specifically to be using this one. You can look on our Twitter to underscore MK underscore FGC for all of our news of upcoming streams and bot releases and similar. But we've come to the end of our stream for tonight. This has been Rillian, 14 to MK. Good luck with your training and good night, everyone.